Hello and welcome to the Sands of Time review channel, it's your host Sammy Thunder. Today I'd like to discuss a watch which has uh, been a part of my state of the collection for around 3-4 to four months and it is my latest acquisition, being the Doxa Sub 300T Diving Star, um, which is the yellow dial configuration. Um, a little bit of background on why I purchased this watch is because I was actually a fan of um, Gordon Ramsay. Uh, back in the day and he sported a yellow brightling watch so a, ye a yellow brightling chronograph to be specific and essentially um, what I noticed was that the yellow was extremely eye-catchy and something that I uh, noticed in pretty much most of his episodes and it, it drove my curiosity and just the yellow being eye-catchy is something uh, that kind of motivated me uh, into getting a yellow dive watch or a yellow watch um, so here we are with the the, the Doxa Sub 300T Diving Star um, and I'm going to go through you know uh, an in-depth review on the watch after three months of wear and it definitely is a keeper within my collection um, so let's go and delve deeper into the watch um, just for some basic specifications this is uh, a stainless steel 316L case totally um, with brushed and polished uh, uh, finishes throughout the case um, the watch itself has a diameter of around 42.5 mils uh, with a 44.5 millimeter lug to lug with a height of around 14 millimeters um, with this cushion styling of case I really don't notice this height because in a lot of uh, cases, I look at the height as just the that cushion case, which is kind of thin, and then you have that protruding uh, uh, bezel, uh, you know, which is giving this uh, watch a very turtle-esque uh, shape. Uh, and it is what this watch is known for, is having that cushion-style turtle case, as it was uh, a watch pioneered by Jean-Jacques Cousteau, and was worked... Uh, co-designed with Doxa watches so it has a lot of dive history and it is a dive watch that is actually designed by divers um, now the watch itself uh, is labeled the sub 300t uh, many would assume that this watch is a 300 meter water resistant diver but it is in fact not it is a 1200 meter water resistant diver or pressure resistant to 120 bar with a screw down case back and also a screw down crown as we can see here now the movement inside is workhouse ETA 2824-2 this is a workhouse movement uh, uh, used you know for a very long time you would see these on Tudor Submariners as well it is simply a workhouse movement the Mercedes Benz of movement with a 4 hertz uh, it is a 4 hertz uh, beat rate and a frequency of 28,800 VPH and has the standard 38 hours of power reserve it is a non-modified EDA 2824 um, Doxa claims it is decorated um, but I believe that the only decoration is within the rotor uh, and that's pretty much it now the watch itself is uh, a very nice or well finished watch and it comes in at a retail price of 2,990 Australian dollars on the uh, bracelet so around 3000 Aussies it will get you the Doxa sub 300T um, and essentially we'll delve a little bit deeper into the watch more specifically into the dial of the watch and essentially the Doxa sub 300T has this nice uh, yellow pastel dial kind of feel to it uh, and it kind of has uh, two kind of uh, finishes or kind of reflections in lights one is when it is in darker light it feels like this glossy yellow and in bright light it does feel like that glossy slash a bit of a matte 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 finish to that texture but as we can look at the uh, the actual dial of this watch um, we do notice that the hands are applied black um, well not applied sorry they are kind of black lacquered finish as we can see here I'll try and get that 
in view correctly and essentially it kind of gives it gives that very nice glossy uh, feel so I'll try and enable an extra source of lighting here so you can see this um, get that in autofocus yep and this is what we notice here um, is that we have those very glossy uh, hands those glossy black markers and it's done it's done perfection it's done to perfection um, you know we have design cues that you know implemented by divers here with the uh, dwarf hour hand and the much larger minute hand and you know when we are diving we concern ourselves with the minute and the time elapsed uh, and this is exactly what this uh, dive watch functions to do and we have this very nice clean aesthetic where we have the docks are automatic in the top left quadrant and the sub 300t diving star in the bottom right quadrant um, and you do notice these uh, kind of markers which at 36912 the extended line which gives this this nice tool tooly symmetry which is something i truly appreciate now try and capture the dial as best as I can um, and as we see here we also have a date window uh, we have white background which clearly matches you know um, the the white in the middle of each of these uh, indices and I really like this squared off uh, seconds seconds hand uh, but yeah the dial itself is done amazingly you know it comes in uh, I believe six different color configurations which is amazing this here is known as the diving star and is the one I chose for the reasons explained now when we look at the watch itself we also concern ourselves with this bezel and we have a uh, bezel that is um, in two different configurations in the sense that we have a no decompression scale uh, on the outside with yellow yellow markings and then we have our typical dive elapsed time bezel um, which is something unique to see and not seen in many divers um, which is very useful for you know your typical your typical divers so just to uh, give you a little bit of a glimpse on the sound of this bezel I will now rotate the bezel this is in small graduating clicks this is in a medium pace this is in a faster pace with the bezel it fully aligns no back play at all uh, it is something I truly truly admire with this watch so I'll just go back to there we go so looking at the case finishing of this watch this watch is actually uh, produced in the same facility or factory as uh, Omega watches so as noticeable uh, we do see a very high degree of finishing uh, probably not to the extent you would see on Omega watches, but done to a very similar standard. And what we notice here is that we have polished uh, outer bezel, and then the inner bezel is brushed. Um, and we look at the case of the watch itself, and uh, we notice that uh, we have very nice uh, uh, brushing that goes on the case. It's executed very highly. Um, you know, it's nothing like you know your typical Seiko turtles or even the Willard in fact I really think the brushing on this thing is uh, done to a very high standard and then we turn to the uh, sides which is done in high polish and what I'll do is just kind of clean that off and as you can see here this is the side of the watch now you probably notice that there's a helium release valve this watch was initially released without the helium release valve um, Doxa said they didn't really need a helium release valve for this watch, but then they realized that they wanted to be true to the Conquistador. So they were like, hey, let's release this exact watch with the helium release valve. And now, I think post-June, this is what the watch comes in, in this configuration. Honestly, I like it. I like to be true to the original, and this is what the watch does. Um, and as usual, we have subtle touches with the orange Doxa Fish logo, and then again, we have this high polish. Um, sorry that this is not... <laughs> cleaned a bit in advanced but as we can see here the, the finishing is very simple and below this bezel what we notice here is we also have a high polished kind of cylinder there you know and you probably notice that also we have the shark tooth uh, shark tooth bezel as well um, so what I'll do is 
I will try to uh, spot focusing. I must have done something wrong. But as you can see, you have the shark tooth bezel, um, and this allows for extreme grippiness, which is something I really, really admire. So that, that that's something that's a really good taste uh, touch story, um, and it's not seen in uh, other watches. And this just means that I have extreme accuracy when manipulating this bezel. Off to the uh, bracelet of this watch. Um, I'll just before that just go through the that bezel, and as you can see, the shark tooth bezel. I'll we'll try to focus on that. Yep, that is the shark tooth bezel done to a very high standard. Um, and coming to the bracelet of this watch, I will zoom out. So the bracelet of this watch is done to a perf done to perfection in the sense that the finishing of this watch is insane. The finishing of this bracelet, sorry, is insane. We have a beads of rice bracelet and we have some nice design cues to the watch. As you can see, the very first link here is uh, kind of conforming with the shape of this case. So the actual lug width of this watch is 20 uh, millimeters. However, we have a link here. So the first link outside of the end link is the um, link that conforms with the with the case and then we have a beautiful nice very nice taper to the watch um, I would like to explain one of the downfalls I believe uh, of this watch for people with smaller wrists I do not recommend this watch for people with smaller wrists for the simple fact that there is an effective lug to lug distance even though I mentioned that the lug to lug quoted by Doxa was around 45 millimeters there is an effective lug to lug and I'll kind of explain why these three beads as we can see here are actually non free moving beads so what that does is it increases the overall length of this watch so you could actually increase this lug to lug by that half distance of this bead plus that half distance of this bead and the lug to lug is probably close to 49 for to 50 so the lug to lug is kind of long and on the wrist on a smaller wrist what happens is this is what you kind of see you see this link going downwards and downwards and that kind of looks ugly to some you know on certain wrists instead you would like to see it flow on the wrist tape it on the wrist kind of like what i'm trying to do here so for wrists smaller than around 6.8 inch wrists i don't recommend it um, there are other options for you but that is one of the downfalls of having this bracelet uh, obviously you can wear it on rubber strap but I think a part of wearing a doxa is having it on the uh, on the beads of rice bracelet and now we have this um, fully milled metal uh, deployant clasp it's a twin re twin release push system a scissor clasp system so this is done to a very high standard and then we have this dive extension this is a dive extension very similar to what citizen employs and it is a six click dive extension so six positions so one two three four five six so that's six positions there so to show you that mechanism in detail what i'll try and do is show you that there as you can see that that scissory scissor section that's a scissor clasp and essentially I'm just going to push in and that's exactly what's happening with your dive extension a very simple implementation but done to a very high standard and something I appreciate from the Doxa brand now looking at the case back uh, we have two different ones uh, I believe the po the pre June models have the fish but the post ones have the sail the Doxa the Doxa ship um, and we have some very it's just a very simple case back obviously tool watch um, aesthetics and that there is the Doxa sub 300t and I've kind of nailed down one of the biggest flaws of this watch for smaller wrists but this watch is perfect for bigger wrists and in fact I do recommend this watch over uh, the Doxa sub 300 and the Doxa sub 1200 so the Doxa sub 1200 has a design where um, you do not have this kind of conforming taper uh, on the watch instead it's a beads of rice 20 mils solid 20 mils um, and that just means your lug to lug is um, 
overall you like the lug will just be shorter and you can wear it on the bracelet and when i'm when i talk about these three links protruding this is something that you do see on integrated watches as well and this is a full metal g-shock and it suffers through the same problem so this this link here is not free moving and that also has the bad effect on a smaller wrist because it, it just may not wear well you know it's not conforming to the wrist at that point even though it you know it does taper so that's one of the issues with that now sorry uh, now with the sub 300 they managed to shave off a mil off the lug to lug they still do have this conforming taper they managed to shave off that height and they managed to put a cost certified movement honestly not a big deal uh, unless you really like the dome sapphire and a smaller look this thing does feel actually it feels thin because of the cushion case it doesn't feel like it's wearing high it has character to it um, and that's something I like um, so I will give her a shot of the Doxa sub 300T so that's the Doxa sub 300T and as you can see my 7.1 inch wrist I'll just activate the um, dive extension it's a hot day today and that is the uh, Doxa Sub 300T uh, on my wrist on a 7.1 inch wrist um, so looks good plays well with the light love the quality and heft of the watch it is a manly watch it is a masculine watch so um, big wrists you know we do want people wearing these to boast their masculinity <laughs> but um <laughs> yeah it is a tank of a watch it is a king of divers you know I had chosen this watch over something like the Oris Caliber 400 or you know just an Oris Aquas in general because of its heritage its ties with John Jock's Cousteau co-designed um, it is a great watch indeed so that is something I truly admire when I did purchase the Doxa Sub 300 it had something more than your typical dive watches at the price range um, but you know it, it is a solid choice uh, especially you know the retail price is not as high for a watch like this and I'm sure you can get a discount uh, on your Doxa so thank you for watching this review um, it is Sammy Thunder I'm gonna sign out uh, with a uh, loom shot um, the loom itself on this watch you know uh, is nothing special uh, Seiko solar tuna loom is better than this Seiko's Luma bright is better than this significantly uh, it is a functional loom it's BGW9 um, it's functional it works it works when you're diving that's what matters but you're not gonna get Seiko loom and that's something I wish some a brand like Doxa would actually try to implement a their own luminescent formula so you know kind of research do some R&D on that and try and get some good stuff going on there but loom is not its most powerful uh, thing but yeah it's uh, sands of time signing out thank you for watching